One of the questions that has been plaguing all of our imaginations is what did we know, when did we know it, and was there any way that this might have been averted? Was there intelligence available uh, to people here in the United States? Our Carl Cameron has just come across some new news and he is standing by with the latest. Carl? Hi, Tony. Well, there have been a number of reports that we've been offering up here on Fox News in the last few days about intelligence intercepts, communiques, uh, various different pieces of information that were gathered worldwide before the attacks, some in this country, some in other nations, particularly in Europe, that apparently were not uh, aggregated, were not centralized fast enough to help the FBI counterintelligence and the CIA overseas recognize that this threat existed. We have just now gotten confirmation from U.S. government sources that, in fact, the CIA had warned FBI counterintelligence sometime five days before the attack on September 11th that there was a man in the United States on the FBI and CIA watch list uh, in the United States and shouldn't have been. His name, Khalid al al Midhar. He, in fact, turns out to have been one of the hijackers on Flight 77, the American Airlines jet that slammed into the side of the Pentagon. Midhar had been on the watch list for more than a year the CIA had identified him as having been in the United States during that five-day period and told the FBI. Now, sources are telling us that the FBI did, in fact, attempt to check out the CIA information, and they determined, some sources are saying, that Midhar was not in the country. Uh, there's a dispute, a lot of uh, conflicting information coming out of both agencies. No one will confirm or deny this publicly. Uh, but our sources at the highest levels of the intelligence community saying that, in fact, the CIA had let the FBI counterintelligence forces domestically know that this man was there. And, of course, we now know that on September 11th, he was one of the hijacked teams on the jet that slammed into the Pentagon. In addition, overnight, a U.S. prisoner, a man currently facing charges for immigration violations, who was arrested in August, was shipped from a jail in Minnesota to somewhere in the greater Washington, D.C. area. Back in August, a French-Algerian man was arrested outside of Boston on immigration charges. Uh, he was determined to have close ties to Osama bin Laden, and he was carrying with him at the time extensive schematic diagrams, flight manuals for Boeing 757s and 767s. At the time, he too had been on the FBI counterintelligence watch list. He has been incarcerated since well into the middle of August. He has now been transferred from a federal prison in the Midwest to the Washington area for additional charges, for additional questioning, I should say. Tony? to answer this one, but the, the question about the, the intelligence gathering, you, you said that uh, the FBI tried to ascertain whether this fellow was in the United States. Would it have been possible for him to go to Canada for a bit and then slip back? There have been reports that some may have come through Canada and indeed discussions between the United States and the Canadian government about security measures. Is that one of the possibilities, or is this something where somebody just simply slipped through the net? Well, it's very difficult to say that. Uh, his visa had expired, this gentleman, Khalid al-Mithar, uh, one of the hijackers on Flight 77, alleged hijackers. The, uh, the expiration of the visas is one of the ways in which these men are obviously tracked. The, the intelligence breakdown has been acknowledged virtually across the board, and the question really becomes, what might we have known and why didn't we know it? Uh, a lot of the intelligence community now somewhat up in arms about the fact that over the past 15 years or so, there has been a dramatic reduction in our intelligence forces. We are, the United States has a severe shortage of translators, a severe shortage of people working for the super secret National Security Agency who can actually listen to the uh, tape recordings and eavesdropping and translate it. So it's entirely possible, in fact, some lawmakers on Capitol Hill in charge of congressional oversight of these agencies half expect that in the coming months we'll find out that the United States, in fact, had evidence of this and just never got around to translating it. All right. Carl Cameron, thank you.